can't have gratitude, a feeling of gratitude inside you at the same time as having resentment towards uh, towards something else. Resentment is is kind of like just hanging expectations somewhere, and then they fall short. Like that's a lot of resentment is rooted in. Like fear of never connecting with anyone. Like fear that I'd never meet anyone that I truly connected with. I for years thought I was low energy. I always felt tired. What changed for me in relation to that, I'm sure a lot of people can relate to this, is the exhausting nature of anxiety. Welcome to the In Search of More podcast. I am your host, Ellie Nash. Join me weekly on my quest for more, more from myself and more from this world. We'll see you on the other side. What's up, Brian? You're disappearing on me. I know, man. This diet's been good to me. Too much, though, you think? Diet, lifestyle, what are we doing? A little bit of both, you know, a little bit of both. Feeling good, though. It's, gotta be one it's crazy other. how um, food is connected to, like, more than just, like, the physical. Like, Meaning? brain fog is gone. Um, just motivation is spiked. All from just changing some eating habits. It's crazy what food does. It is crazy. And the energy around food, you know? It's insane. Yeah, I've been working on it as well, but not as fast as you, so... <laughs> We'll see. We'll see if it's easy come, easy go. Yeah, right? That's a trick. <laughs> Keeping it off. Oh, fine. Now. That's what I tell myself when something's going slow. It's like, taking a long time to get here will take a long time to lose it. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, maybe no. Maybe. Maybe. We will find out. What are we talking about today? We're talking about today, um, gratitude. Mm. Gratitude. So I'll tell you what's up. I was, um, I have this app on my phone called My Wonderful Days, My W Days. I've been using it pretty much since I got an iPhone. Mm. Like, 2012 or so. Is that a confession? I got an iPhone <laughs> five years after it came out. <laughs> um, and it's a journaling app, mm. right? So you, you can prompt it with different questions, whatever else, but I just use it to, to journal. And, you know, you sorted by date and you can search and stuff like that. And I was journaling the other night and it made me think about something else. So I looked it up like, hey, did I ever write about something like this? I looked it up. And I didn't find what I was looking for, but I found a journal I wrote from sometime in April in 2013, nearly 10 years ago. And just the stuff I was dealing with then and things like, you know, at the time I had just started dating Frady, who I ended up marrying. But I mean, remember then it was dicey territories, but it wasn't so much about her. It was about like everything else was bringing up inside me fears would I ever connect to someone and that's some of what I was writing down and uh, this was also fairly early recovery and struggling with like the irritability the pissed offness the confusion the fears the feelings that are coming up all from you know that was a couple months into um, my recovery journey and uh, just hit me with a ton of gratitude like where I was and and where I am now and uh I thought we'd talk about that. Yeah. Gratitude is big. Um, it's not a word that's ever lost on me now, especially in the last, I'd say maybe four years, where um, I actually have a, a, a practice that I develop where when, um, as soon as I wake up, as soon as I open my eyes, before I roll and touch my phone, sometimes even before I say good morning to my wife, uh, I recite three things that I'm grateful for as my eyes open. That's so whatever kind of comes to mind, whatever lands, that's what I'm grateful for. So like, for example, this morning I was, I said that I was grateful for my vision because I was able to look out my window and see, you know, my yard and like just being able to like literally see there's people out there that are literally blind and can't see and enjoy that sense. Right. Um, and then sometimes it'll be like gratitude towards people that have like either pushed me or pulled me or whatever the case is. So, right. Um, yeah, that's something I do three things that I'm grateful for every morning I wake up before I do anything else. And it really kind of sets my day in motion. Do you do repeats? Like is it repeat? I try not to, but right. also I'm, I'm, you know, not too much pressure. I don't want to make it a thing. So kind of whatever comes to mind. So, right. Meaning it's not the same thing every day. Yeah. No, never. Well, I try not to be. So like yesterday, one of the things I was grateful for was <laughs> my, like my literacy, being able to read because one of my goals, um, this year was to like read more. And I know people, I actually have a family member that was like semi-literate and like struggled, got into like a lot of stuff because he wasn't able to read. And it just kind of came to mind, you know, while I was being grateful for that. So 
just the, something as simple as that, or it could be like, I'm grateful for a relationship, you know, right. uh, my kids, like it could be all types of stuff, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's how I start my day. And I usually set things in motion for the better. So yeah, gratitude is big, man. And I think if we, if we kind of live in that space, um, we'll definitely see a, a, a better outcome across the board in our lives and our society, you know, half full could be worse. That's kind of how I approach things. Yeah. I had a mentor shared with me that if you take gratitude, like it doesn't mix well with other emotions. It doesn't mix well with fear. It doesn't mix well with um, judgment. Mm. It doesn't mix well with uh, I don't know, the, like all the other. Say gratitude and resentment. Like right. Resentment's a big one, right? Resentment, the sense that someone or something should be different than it is. Mm. You can't have gratitude, a feeling of gratitude inside you at the same time as having resentment towards... Uh, Towards something else. It's interesting that you mentioned that you start your day with it. Have you ever heard of the Modaani prayer? No. In Judaism, Modaani? No. So it's the very first thing that um, Jews are instructed to say in the morning while still in bed, like within moments of waking. Mm -hmm. Most prayers in Judaism have God's name. This prayer doesn't because like in that state where we haven't woken up, we haven't washed our hands, we haven't come to, we're not meant to, mention God's name, but the prayer is still, it's our modani means I am thankful, right? I am grateful to God for returning my soul to me. And, you know, I'd always heard this prayer from when I was a kid, they taught it to us, modani lefanecha melechai bekayam, right? Shechazarta binishmasi bechemla rabba monasecha. And I always understood that as a gratitude, right? It's in Hebrew saying, thank you, thank you God for returning my soul to me. And, but the prayer ends and for whatever reason, this only came to me like two or three weeks ago, which says, it's like, God, thank you for returning my soul to me. And then it's great is your faithfulness. Great is your faithfulness. And I just it's like, I always heard it as, hey, this is the gratitude prayer we say as, as Jews. But for whatever reason, when I, like I translate it one day correctly, like word by word, and it's a gratitude prayer, but then it's great is your faithfulness. I was saying great is your faithfulness in what? In me. Right, it's for restoring my soul to me, for restoring life to me. Right. It's there's um a sense that God believes in me. He gave me one more day to do what he thinks it is I gotta do. So is that that combination? I was always told it was a gratitude prayer, but it's both a gratitude prayer and maybe a like a a boost of confidence. Like God has faith in you today mm. to do what it is you gotta do. God has faith in me to do what it is I gotta do. So, yeah. And you just saying, um, you know, just God's belief in you makes me think of this, this, um, this in saying, us. this quote that I heard in us, um, yes. where it talks about procrastination and how like procrastination is sort of like the audacity for someone to believe that God will give them a second chance to do what they can do today, tomorrow. So it's like, it's powerful stuff when you think of it, you know? Um, yeah, man, gratitude is is more gratitude. We need it for sure. I always look at things, could be worse, you know? Could be worse. Are there things in your life today that um, you never imagined possible? Ask me that again. <laughs> Ask me that again, meaning? I actually was thinking it different than I asked, so I'm glad you asked. It's, are there problems in your life today that you'd never imagined you'd be lucky enough to have those problems. <laughs> lucky enough. But yeah, there's definitely problems in my life today that at one point I couldn't compre comprehend even dealing with or being in my stratosphere. Such as? Such as uh, growing a second business. It's been, it's been a challenge for the last eight months and invested a lot of money haven't seen a return on that money yet but just in that like playing at that level right you know where it's like okay at one point my life was around like 10 and 20 dollar problems now it's <laughs> it's a little bit more right it's different problems yeah it's different problems i think about that with my kids because that stuff is kind of stymie you it humble you mm -hmm. you know 
man, I woke up the other day to a punch of the balls by my son and I got so mad. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know I can still scream that loud. I scared the, scared the whole house. <laughs> why did he punch you in the balls? I have no idea why he wanted to play. I thought it was funny. I don't, I don't think he meant to punch me there. Right, right. I think he was just like, dad, get up, get up. I want to play. He always said, I want to do a project. I want to do a project. And I was like, give me a couple minutes. Give me a couple minutes. It was Sunday morning. And next thing. <laughs> <laughs> a whack a uh, But then afterwards, like, I, I reacted strongly, mm. you know, and uh, more than strongly, I reacted. And, you know, he laughed and got a little scared and wasn't quite sure. And, like, <laughs> you know, my wife handled it. And, uh, but afterwards, like, a little guilt sets in, mm. you know, like, oh, man, like, shouldn't have done that. Should have managed that better. But it's like, these are problems that right. I never thought I'd have. And that journal I referenced at the beginning of this conversation, one of the the fears I wrote was um, like fear of never connecting with anyone. Like fear that I'd never meet anyone that I truly connected with. Because in that journal, the way um, my sponsor at the time recommended, he actually said, list, I think it was five things I'm grateful for. Like start the journaling with five things I'm grateful for. No repeats for 30 days. That's why I asked the repeat mm. question. So no repeats for 30 days gets you thinking about stuff. Mm -hmm. um, any fears that have come up in the last day or I'm feeling presently. And then just, you know, free expression. And one of those fears that I wrote was a fear of never connecting with anyone. And then waking up Sunday morning and now... My fears are around like how much will I screw up my kids? Right. <laughs> how is how is that fear of connecting with people? Where are you at from 2013 to now? It's definitely not done. You know, I was speaking to my uh, youngest brother yesterday, and you know, I was chatting about different things, and he works with me, and he's also, you know, starting to think about marriage and stuff like that, and he's super intelligent also super in his head. Mm. So I'm telling him, you know, we got three intelligence centers inside us. So I so said, we got our head, right? Which is great. Like you don't have to think about that anymore because however much you pull yourself out of that, the rest of your life, that'll be there. You've like done 25 years, like solidly in that mm -hmm. space. You'll always be there. Then you got the heart and you got the stomach, right? Like there's three intelligence centers, but for whatever reason we're communicated to mostly about the head and understanding. Mm. But obviously there's intelligence that comes to us in different ways. They say people who live in nature, right? Their hair stands up when, when there's danger. So right. they know it, they know it from their body reacting to something. So where is that? Call it a gut reaction. Mm -hmm. Right, that word is not coming from. Or when you walk into the room, you can immediately tell like the, the vibe or the energy yeah, is yeah. off. Yeah, Where you can that? meet somebody for the first time, and uh, you know, growing up culturally, like we would always say, like my spirit doesn't take this person. Like that's meaning like on our first meet you, that vibe is off. Like we would say, like my spirit doesn't take this person. The right. old heads is what they they said. So yeah, right. My wife was asking me about someone yesterday, and she said every time, every time I see him, it's like I feel like this jolt in my spine. Mm. Right, so my body is like on alert. What do you think that is? Oh, what do you think it is? I mean, you know exactly what it is. Right. The problem is you're thinking <laughs> what right. it is, right? The intelligence already came to you. There's something that's alerting you too. Now we start the dance of thinking and thinking that the mind has more intelligence than the body. That's that's a wild and crazy thing. And also you can think about it in different ways. You know, in the morning I take a bunch of vitamins and then to think that there's a system in there that knows, like send this here, send that there, send this. Oh, vitamin C, do this with right. it. Zinc, do that with it. Little it's echinacea crazy. do that. How does it know? It's crazy. It's crazy. Um, divine design, I guess. Divine design. Right. Um, back to your brother. Um, oh, so yeah. So what I was telling yeah. him there was about the heart also, right? There's emotions and stuff like that. So you said, where are you with it? And so with the head, you know, solidly, like you. I grew up in the same house, solidly in the head. Um, my stomach, I feel like that. I feel like I'm, I'm in touch there. Like it's operating at, a good level, mm -hmm. you know, I, I don't know what a hundred percent is, but I feel very much, um, in touch. Like I'm picking up a lot of information through there. My heart probably still sub 10%. Hmm. Really? Why is that? So. Just, I think there's still a lot of walls around that guy. So 
is it to, a lot of walls to keep out or to give out like to receive or to give what goes both ways doesn't it right right the dam keeps the water in and keeps the water out hmm. i did a uh a breath work the other night with um mayor k so it's good having like some public figures in your life because then you can just <laughs> speak comfortably you can say their name and all right right i don't have to dance too much so Mayor got his breathwork certification. Nice. A few months into that, and uh, he was in Miami. I said, hey, let's do a, a breathwork. So we did one in my garage. He had about 30 people show up, and it was wild. And during that, I felt like I felt one of those walls um, around that come down, and I've seen how I'm picking up and giving out information, certainly picking up information from there in ways that I wasn't, um, I wasn't previously. So, and your heart is where the connection lies, right? Or fear. Like a lot of these emotions, right? That just tell us something. They give us information around um, the world around us. I didn't only mean it in the sense of feelings mm -hmm. that it allows us to emote, but also it like allows us to pick up things around us, like an intelligence center. Like data comes in and it can process it in some way. It can interpret it in some way for us. And then we just have to know how to how to listen to it. Yeah, I agree. Um, and and you said you had a like your fear of connection or connecting with other people. Describe what that fear is like, like on a on an everyday level. What was that like? I think there's some value that people can probably get from that. So when you say you had like a fear, because to me fear is a strong word, right? Of connecting with other people. No, it was a fear of never connecting of never connecting never connecting connecting meaning like so genuine. walking into a room mm -hmm. and just never quite feeling part of it or seeing two people interact in a way and saying hey i never interact that way with anyone assuming those feelings that are being communicated are genuine and there's actually that connection going on between those two people a fear that i'll i'll never experience that i'll never get there so i think a lot of that was coming up um after I met my wife, because it was definitely a feeling that I felt with her early on that I had never felt with anyone. But then that very quickly got covered over by all these other uh, stuff. My um, my mistakes, you know, behaviors that I wasn't proud of, guilt, shame, anger, resentment towards her for not being the person I imagined she was going to be when I first met her, for not being the person that I wanted her to be like all of those feelings and they cover up that connection and then i'm saying hey you know in those moments it feels like okay this person isn't right because of a b c and d but could i have that connection that i felt with someone else who doesn't trigger me so badly all right then that then saying hey but i never felt that with anyone and then i knew i knew guys who you know connected often they were kind of always dating someone else right it was those early stages of, um, you know, connection, I don't want to call it infatuation because it felt like, and they described it as real connection that happened maybe once a year, once every two years, they had, uh, the girl that got away. I didn't have the girl that got away. I had none. I had no one who I ever felt mm. like I did about my wife, no one before, no one after. So that fear was what if I don't find what if I don't find that again? But it wasn't only in romantic relationships. It was always in, also in regular relationships, just feeling like there were people connecting in ways that that I wasn't. Nice. So what would you say was the the, gate, the greatest takeaway from 2013 journaling that to like where you are now? Um, I know you said you're still kind of wrestling with it, but what does progress look like? Is there any progress there? The greatest takeaway was that was the, the gratitude. When mm. I was reading it, and the feeling when I'm reading that, it's pretty amazing because I'm reading something that doesn't feel at all like me. If you gave this to me and said, who wrote this? I wouldn't have picked up that it was me outside of the names and reference points that would have, that would have told me it was me. Like the, the details surrounding this guy's life feel so different than what I'm dealing with today. And because I was in the space of problems, right? That's what I was journaling. I was journaling about something that was bugging me. Right. And I'm like, 
this is insane that I'm dealing with a level of problems that I didn't think was possible. I'm dealing with problems with my wife and kids when 10 years ago, I didn't think I could have a wife or kids. That's, right. that's the point. That's powerful stuff. That's, that's the gratitude. That's the gratitude. That's powerful stuff. You, know? uh, you brought up resentment um, and it, it made me think about resentment and how um, especially in relationships and how um, for me, I think resentment is, is kind of like just hanging expectations somewhere and then they fall short. Like that's a lot of resentment is rooted in. Um, and for me, like I made a shift with, cause one thing I try not to do is like live a life of, with regrets, which I think it's like kin to resentment. It's like, I'm regretful that this didn't happen. So anyone or anything associated to that thing not happening, I could have resent towards if you regret that something didn't happen, mm -hmm. if you're feeling regret, then you're saying there's also a resentment tucked in that? Yeah, I think so. Even if projected, right? It could be a resentment towards towards yourself. For sure. Sure. Okay. Yeah, even if projected. Um, I can get with that. Yeah, and I, I think, um, you know, particularly with relationships, uh, I believe that, you know, like, we don't own anyone, right? People are meant to be experienced. And often you see people thinking like you know like you said you have to be this way you have to check these boxes for this to work um and i think if we just kind of shift that perspective a bit like okay you're you right where is obviously we're connecting for some reason there's there's some there's some uh, synergy between us mm -hmm. that we're willing to dive into um and let me let me kind of stop there and then enjoy the ride from there and then whatever comes up but there's some compromise in there but you said in the previous episode that Relationships don't work because couples compromise. I said in a previous episode. I think so. No, I think I shared like an Instagram. Uh, Instagram. Right. Like Instagramming with you about. They're all blurred. Inside. Right. About, I wasn't saying <laughs> I agree with this. It was just a funny meme. It said that, um, you know, the problem in relationships is people compromise. So if one person likes traveling, another person doesn't like traveling, they travel sometimes pissed off. Right, right, right. And the other one is that's pissed it. off because they're traveling. Right. Um, yeah, no, but I think just kind of shifting that perspective, like, and that's something that I, I've kind of put into practice in my own relationship with my wife, where it's like some of the stuff that um, early on I would say, like, I don't like this about her. I recognize, like, that's her thing. And I just kind of try to be the soil and support her as much as possible and help her grow however she sees that to be. Um, and then just kind of double down on the things that I do appreciate for, about her, that I am grateful for. And it kind of like balances things out for me. Um, so what are you connecting this to resentments? Yeah. So like, right. So meaning, yeah, if, if, if I didn't get into this relationship, for example, not me specifically, but if I didn't get into this relationship, if I didn't have, you know, get married so young and have kids, I would have went on to be a lawyer or a doctor. And then a certain resentment that builds towards. Right. Her because of that. Right, right. Belief. Okay, and you get around that how? By just, one, understanding that everything happens how it's supposed to. Right. Um, and two, just kind of appreciating the things that you do have, the gifts that you do have, right? Because what do you know, right? The only thing, a friend says, you don't, the only thing we know is that we don't know anything. So, yeah, in your mind, you would have went on to be a lawyer or a doctor, but you, you, you could have gotten terminally ill also because you stressed out you know, studying pre-med and, and residencies and all that stuff. So, um, yeah, I think just kind of appreciating what you do have and not worrying about what you don't. Right. So uh, let's stick a pin in this because one of the topics that I've been um, mulling around in my head is around the triggers in relationships, uh, just some of the stuff that I'm dealing with now and uh, what it's really about, how to process it. So maybe we turn that into a, a separate episode so someone can come into this one which will probably have gratitude in the title somewhere and walk out of this feeling the the sense of gratitude mm. versus the versus the um the right some of the other feeling that they may be get that may get if we go into that conversation right. around um triggers and everything else but you know that's what i find amazing that's what i find amazing that we can sit here struggling and wrestling with these topics when just a few years ago, you were dealing with, like, if I can share this, you can edit it out later if you feel uncomfortable, but 
you know, day to day motivation issues. Mm -hmm. Just like getting up and what, you know, what's my purpose? What am I, the just generating the excitement to do, to use your talents to create? Right. That, that was something I remember you dealing with. Like, where does that motivation come from? Someone asked me the other day and they said, um, you know, Ellie, how do you have so much energy? And when he said that, I reminded that I for years thought I was low energy. I always felt tired. What changed for me in relation to that, and I'm sure a lot of people can relate to this, is uh, the exhaustive nature of the exhausting nature of anxiety. So I wake up in the morning with those anxieties and fears and everything else. By the time 11 a.m. hits, we've ran a marathon right. in our bodies, in our mind. So that energy, not low energy, I've just used up all my energy. So I said, so that's why I told him. I said, you know, I said the energy is there. We're just putting blocks on it or misusing it. And once that's out of the way, then boom, it explodes. So to see you in the place where a few years ago you were struggling with motivation mm -hmm. and now you're struggling with, you know, how to, how much to have on your plate and how to get done all, all right. the things you want to get done and <laughs> managing a second business and then me dealing with things like wife and kids, stuff that I never imagined was possible um, in my life. Like that's huge gratitude right there. Like, give me those problems. These are the problems I was, for sure. I was praying for. Amen. Amen.